So it's just over six months ago that I made and uploaded my first video to YouTube and I thought it might be an idea just to come on and share some of that journey to my first 500 subscribers with you and my kind of top lessons learned. Now, currently I'm sitting at somewhere around 420, I think it is, subscribers, which is a very small number in YouTube terms. And anybody out there who's on this same journey, this same path, um, you know, will appreciate where I'm coming from with that. Of course, I'd love to get over 500 subscribers. Of course, I'd love to break a thousand and more. Um, but the way that I look at it at the moment is if I were to walk in into a room filled with 420 people, like-minded people who were interested in the same passions as me, interested in, you know, this my same likes, dislikes, my love of travel, my love of my garden, my love of home. If they shared those passions and had turned up curious to hear what I had to say, then I'd be feeling really appreciated and really, really grateful. So, 420 is not bad at all in my mind. And if you're one of my regular viewers who's usually here to see what I've got to say about seasonal home decor, or it's a shopping haul, or I'm in my garden, or whatever that might be, then stick around for this light bulb moment that I had, because I think that it can apply to so many different things in life, not just making YouTube videos. And uh, and hey, it might give you a bit of an insight into what goes on in the background for all of us making this content for you, all of us YouTube creators, and it might even inspire you to start your own YouTube channel. And if you're here because because you too are a small channel. I'm so glad to have you here. Let me know in the comments below where you are in your journey and I can follow you too and be cheering you along on the sidelines too. You know, starting a YouTube channel and following the progress of other small channels as we all kind of grow together, it really reminds me of when I learned to ski. I had dabbled in skiing a little bit when I was in school. And then in my early 20s, I went on my first ski holiday and I loved being together in that beginner's class on the nursery slopes because there we would be, we'd all turn up every morning and we'd be kind of cheering each other on as we wobbled down the slopes, trying desperately to emulate what the instructor was telling us, watching the really good cool skiers ski down the mountainside and be kind of looking at them thinking, one day, one day, and somehow I kind of think that starting a YouTube channel is a bit like that when there's all these other small creators out there and you kind of feel this camaraderie like you're all together there on the nursery slopes just learning and growing at the same time, watching the the big boys, the big channels, the super cool skiers thinking one day, one day. So why YouTube? Well, the Seasonal Touch existed as an online home decor store that I was running and I was doing lots of markets and pop-up events, that type of thing. But I realised that where my passion really lay was trying to share what I had learned about seasonal home decor and how adding a touch of it to your home can really kind of boost your mood and really connect you to the outside world, to nature. Um, it's the perfect way to, you know, have a framework to refresh your space, all of that. I wanted to share that. I wanted to share the styling tips that I had learned. Um, that appealed to me much more than directly retailing products. And sure, I could still recommend products. I could share, you know, who had the best deals in home decor or, you know, who had um, great new products in store. I could point people in the right directions but that's what appealed much more than actually kind of retailing the products and yeah, posting people in the right direction, sharing my passion for it. That's where I felt I could really add value, as I say, rather than retailing products directly. And that's why I decided to start my own YouTube channel. As Marie Forleo would say, I was multi-passionate. I am multi-passionate. 
of course I love my seasonal home decor but I love home styling of all sorts. I love my garden and learning about new things there. I love to travel, visit new places and so I just thought I could perhaps build a little bit of a community here on YouTube where I could share my passions and hopefully you know gather together a little bit of a tribe of people who love the same things as I did and they would be able to share their experiences in the comments and we would all be able to learn from each other. I was also really aware that the over 50 age group is the fastest growing audience group on YouTube. Now, I am 58 years old and so I just thought it would be amazing to be able to represent that group of people and provide content for that age group. Now, my content is absolutely not exclusively for the kind of over 50 age group. Um, and I follow lots of people from all different ages. I love following young women particularly and seeing what they are inspired by in their home and what their home decor style are and have learned loads of tips and tricks from all age groups across all different subject matters on YouTube. But I just thought it would be nice to get out there and somehow represent the over 50 age group. You know, we're not ready to just retire and do nothing. We've got so much still to give and so much to share. And yeah, I just thought it'd be great to get on there, build a bit of a community and learn from each other. So I uploaded my first video to YouTube on the 31st of August, 2023. Now to date it has, just checking here, it has 406 views, um, three viewer comments and 22 likes and it gained me nine subscribers, four of them in that first week. You know, the quality isn't great. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I was completely winging it, but I did it. I got it up there, got the first video done, at least I'd made a start. And so before I come on to my main kind of light bulb moment in all of this, as regards, you know, starting and growing your, your YouTube channel, there's three kind of pieces of advice that I would love to give anybody who is just starting out. Things that I wish somebody had been able to tell me right at the very start. Number one, get comfortable with the feeling that you have absolutely no idea what you're doing and that you are just winging it. With each video that you make, you will be able to make little improvements. You know, if you put the time in, do the research, make your little improvements, just keep showing up time after time after time, video after video after video, it will get better and you will improve. It's just like learning any other skill and it's just like being back on the nursery slopes, you know, learning to ski. You will get better, but you will feel really uncomfortable in the beginning. Just get used to it. My second piece of advice would be that things are gonna get faster. Everything you do just now is gonna take a really long time, whether it's coming up with the ideas, filming the videos, editing the videos, figuring out all the, the kind of um, background stuff in YouTube of actually uploading the videos, getting everything, all the techie stuff in place. You will get much, much faster at that. But in the beginning, because it's all new, everything is going to take a really long time. And the third thing that I figured out, and this relates really just to actually filming the videos was in the beginning when I was filming I would um, keep stopping the video if I made a mistake, get really annoyed with myself because I'd stumbled over my words or whatever, stop filming, go right back to the beginning again, start all over and then I realised that all you really needed to do if you lose your train of thought or you stumble over your words or whatever, don't stop filming, just pause, just wait till you remember what you were going to say or you check your notes or whatever and then just just start speaking and start filming again and then when you're editing it you will get more clever at editing and you'll be able to just edit out the bit that you stumbled over and just you know piece it together and that will save you so much time and I wished that I'd learned that much earlier. Look, I just want to really encourage anybody who's right in those early stages. And I'm not that much further on than you. I'm only 
seven, six, seven months down the line, but it's amazing how much you will learn in those six or seven months. So if that's you right back at the beginning, keep going, you're doing a great job, you're going to improve massively over the next six or seven months. So yeah, just keep going. And so here it is, my light bulb moment that has come out of these first kind of six to seven months of being here on YouTube. Um, and this is definitely going to be my strategy going forward. And when I say it at first, it's going to sound a bit controversial, So, but bear with me and let me explain exactly what I mean. Because my strategy going forward, and I think it's one that all new YouTube creators just need to follow, is this. To succeed on YouTube, all you need to do is find success and copy it. <gasps> but wait, before you bail and my audience retention graph absolutely plummets, let me just explain exactly what I mean and what I don't mean. To be clear, I'm not talking about replicating someone else's video. Let's say that you've got a tech channel reviewing cameras. I'm certainly not talking about, you know, just watching someone else's video and just copying it verbatim and, you know, copying their top 10 and, and, you know, that type of thing. No, that is absolutely not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about any sort of plagiarism either. What I'm talking about is observing the channels and the creators in your niche, the ones where you think that you share a common audience with them. Get really curious about what they do and how they do it. Lean into their knowledge and expertise. Look at what's working for them and learn from it. Firstly, make a list of three or four channels that you think are absolutely crushing it. The ones where you think, you know, one day, one day, going back to the ski slopes, watching those super cool skiers coming down, you know, the, the black run or whatever. Which are the channels that you watch that you think they are absolutely crushing it and one day I want to be just like them. So make yourself a list of three or four channels. Look at their view figures. What topics and formats are working for them? Where are they getting the most engagement from their audience? What's been their most popular video topics, you know, over the last year or so? How do they structure their videos? Are they standing? Are they sitting? You know, does it seem like maybe they've got a little setup somewhere in their house where their camera is just permanently there, making it much easier for them just to pop into the, the kind of same set and, you know, record their videos? Obviously, some subject matters that will work for, some it won't. But, you know, could you do something like that? What about the way that the video is edited? Pay really close attention to that. Do they have images sliding in and out? Do they overlay pictures on their screen? Do they have it where they're presenting one minute and the next minute the screen is filled with something that they are talking about? Get really curious about that. Wonder, you know, how are they doing that and how could I do that? Learn all those editing tricks. It takes a bit of working out, but it isn't that difficult once you realise, you know, what you are trying to achieve. You know, what length are their videos? Look at all the lengths of their different videos. Which lengths seem to get the most views? Is that something that you could try too, keeping them to those kind of similar lengths? How about their branding, their identity? What sort of colours do they use in their thumbnails? If you reckon that your audience is similar to theirs, then maybe that's something that's going to resonate with your audience as well. So you know, just be aware of that. If it's working for them, then there's no reason why it wouldn't work for you. And again, I'm not saying copy their colours, copy their, you know, style, copy their font, but just be aware that if that is the aesthetic that works for that audience, then maybe you need to be thinking about something in a similar kind of aesthetic. You know, there's a good reason why tools such as vidIQ, TubeBuddy and the like, um, once you've signed up to them, they let you pull together some channels that you perceive as competitor channels that you think, you know, you've got a similar kind of crossing over audience and take a deeper dive into what keywords are they using? What video tags are they using? What their trending videos are? 
And the reason is so that you can learn from all of that information and use it to improve your own channel. Effectively, you are kind of copying what they are doing. What I'm talking about here is really what's known as competitor analysis. You're studying the videos created um, in the same niche as you or in the same kind of subject area. And these insights will help you understand your competitors' strengths, their weaknesses and what their strategies are. And if their strategies are clearly working for them, then there's no reason why they wouldn't work for you. Your goal is to really try to emulate them, but in your own style. And if you think you spot a weakness, then great, there's an opportunity there for you to maybe plug a gap and raise your game. Of course, another type of channel to copy on YouTube are the ones creating videos specifically to help people to grow on YouTube. And I'm thinking about your Tube Buddy, VidIQ, you know, those type of channels, um, even Think Media. And I also follow Katie Steckley, who's first hand knowledge I find really easy to learn from. Don't you think that's kind of how we learn any new skill though? We learn by watching, you know, if we want to learn how to cook we might find a TV chef that we love to follow, we watch how they chop, we look at what utensils they use, we copy their techniques. Budding artists may recreate famous works of art so that they can learn the styles and the techniques and the compositions. Even in my own passion of home decor, you know, we try to recreate a look that we've seen in a magazine or on a YouTube video. And so I return to my original statement, which was that to succeed on YouTube, you just need to find success and copy it. And of course I did say that slightly tongue in cheek, but you know, when you're learning a new skill, it's perfectly acceptable to draw inspiration from others and even mimic certain, you know, aspects of their work in order to understand the techniques involved and practice the tricks of the trade, so to speak. So while it's okay to start with imitation, the ultimate aim should be to evolve beyond that and to add your own unique spin to the work. Look, I hope this has been of value to anybody who, as I say, is just a new creator on YouTube. Maybe you're just totally new starting out on your journey, or maybe like me, you're just hoping to get beyond those first 500 subscribers up to a thousand and more. Hope you've got something out of this and at least to know that you're not alone, that there's lots of us in the same boat. And as I said at the beginning, if you've been one of my regular viewers and you've stuck through this video, then I think that the whole look for success and copy it can be applied to anything, any skill you want to learn. If you want to learn about how to decorate your home, if you want to learn cooking or gardening or whatever, all we're really doing is finding somebody who is successful at it, watching what they do, copying, learning from them. Where are they succeeding? Where are they doing well? And, you know, emulating it, but putting your own spin on it. So that's all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.